you've got no one to blame but yourself. for employing me, sire. <laughs> Do you mind explaining to me why you've stopped the coach almost three feet from the entrance? <laughs> the full knowledge of my accursed and useless limb. It was not me, it was the horse. <laughs> it's such a powerful beast under the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poor coachman that blames his... <laughs> <laughs> You are a powerful beast under the rain, aren't you? <laughs> Uncle Murdoch, my legal guardian, master of Dundreek, and the most potent force in the Vale of Glen Miller. Go on, Bula, get those anorexic limbs up these stairs. Uh, oh, uh, I'm right behind you, sire. What sinister judiciary of fate decreed that I, young Tom, should be domiciled under the same roof as such a brutal beast? Was it only a week last Thursday that I nestled happily and securely in the cosy Edinburgh abode of my dear parents? Order. Tom fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, young Tom. Time little people were in bed. Oh, must I, Mama? Oh, come on, Martha. Let the boy finish his comics and his cream buns. Really, Joshua, you spoil young Tom. Very well, you can stay up for another three hours, but not a second more, mind. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. And by the way, Tom, take this handful of gold sovereigns and pound notes. Papa! I want you to play truant from school tomorrow and just go out and enjoy yourself. Oh, there's Thank a you, good Papa. Boy. <laughs> Papa? Mm hmm, Tom? What would happen to our happy, secure, and cosy life if you and Mama were suddenly to drop down dead? <laughs> really, young Tom? No, no, Martha. It's a very sensible question. If anything were to happen to us, young Tom, I'm afraid you'd have to go and stay with your brutal Uncle Murdoch at the cold, sinister, and unhappy estate at Dundree. <laughs> but never fret. The odds against your mother and I dropping dead simultaneously are about... Joshua! Dundreek land, young Tom, as far as the eye can see in every direction. A portion different from the hydrophobic confines of Edinburgh, I'll wager. Indeed, sir. <laughs> Claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> look long and look hard, young Tom, my loon, but one day all this could be a safari park. <laughs> Dundreek. The day I came to live at Dundreek under the guardianship of Uncle Murder was a day indelibly stamped on my mind. It was <laughs> the day I attended the double internment of my beloved parents. Amen. As the new head of the family, Uncle Murder was in charge of the funeral arrangements. Thus, I found myself domiciled at Dundreek, unhappy and unaccustomed to these grey, remote surroundings. The year was 1746, and Bonnie Prince Charlie and the remnants of his tattered army were on the run from the dreaded Redcoats. <laughs> George Lookalike Contest. And don't forget, 
There's only Christie's in the Tonga Lounge tonight. Mystery abounded in that place. Why were the Redcoats such frequent visitors to Dundree, making regular deliveries of I knew not what to a basement in the East Wing? Potatoes, Mrs. B, potatoes. <laughs> and who was the beautiful woman in the portrait? <laughs> and what possible motives could Uncle Murdoch have for inviting young virgins from the village to spend the night at Dundree? Now, my dear, let's get you out of these nasty wet clothes. Wet clothes, sir? Surely you jest. Nope. <laughs> now, let's get you out of these nasty wet clothes. Oh, you beautiful. And what were the strange noises seeping from within the locked bedroom door? Although I was grateful for my uncle's hospitality in my hour of need, I soon discovered that he was a most frugal man. Right then, that's 17 guineas, 13 and sixpence, three farthings, three marshmallows and four odd fellows. Oh, and a pop gun. Oh. <laughs> well, have you got your housekeeping? 17 groats this week. Uh, oh, but uncle, you know I don't. You've got all my money, my gold watch, even my dinky toys. Mm. Can you suppose that your glue grows in trees, sir? But you know as soon as my parents will have read, you'll be more than recompensed. Please do not ask for credit. As a refusal often offends. <laughs> Make a withdrawal. All I could do was gnash my gums in frustration. But fortunately, news of the will was not long in coming. Pardon the intrusion, sir. What do you want? I represent the Edinburgh law firm of McNiven, McVicar and McCabe. Hey, look, if it's about that second-hand coach that I sold your client, the brakes were in full working on. No, 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 you misconstrue, sire. We are dealing with the estate of your late brother and his wife. Do you have the spondulics with you? Unfortunately not, sire. They died penniless. They left nothing but this old document which contains incontestable proof that your nephew, young Tom, is the legal and rightful master of Dundee. I spit in your document. Now be gone, scoundrel, before I make your backside the 19th hole of my golf course! The stranger's intrusion had seriously disjointed Uncle's countenance. Indeed, I'd never seen a face so blackened with rage. Come on, Cass, faster! Faster! You're there, feel between your bellies, Eddie! Never drop so till it's ten minutes old. Come and get it! Spit it out. What do you think you're doing, Bradbury? Me, sir? Yes, you. Did I or did I not see you up Muttet's Bray last night stealing seven cow packs? No, no. <laughs> Tell the truth, man. Well, I've got a wife and seven kids and they were starving. And you will starve today. Mila! Stand them somewhere where I can watch me eat. I want to see him drool. Since the solicitor's visit, my uncle's attitude had changed towards me. He seemed far more attentive, even friendly. And rightful master of Dundreef. 
Ah, young Tom's joining us for lunch, Bueller. <laughs> My, my, I wonder what young Morag's doing up that tree with no clothes on. Mmm, <laughs> a lovely plate of mushrooms. Tuck in, Tom. <laughs> to take our minds off the distressing events of the day, Uncle Murdoch decided to teach me how to play a new game called tennis. Right then, young Tom. We deserve. Ready when you are. You cannot be serious. <laughs> The ball was... <laughs> but it was not all fun and games. These were still dangerous times, and Bonnie Prince Charlie and his rebel hordes were still plundering in the neighborhood. <laughs> and it was up to all loyal servants of good King George to do their bit. Uncle made sure I was no exception. Right, young Tom? Safety harness, fine and secure? Yes, thank you, Uncle. Right. <laughs> you see Bonnie Prince Charlie or any of his marauding Highland hordes? Raise the alarm. Just shout something like, um, Death to the Jacobites, long live King George. Death to the... No, no! <laughs> no, no, no. Just, um, try it out when I say go. Seems to go just fine. <laughs> Good luck to you, Tom. I had been at my post barely five minutes when I espied an old crone gathering faggots in the thicket. Oh, oh, oh. Will no one help the poor old woman? <laughs> old crone, can I be of service? <laughs> oh, you startled me, sir. Yes, you can. I'll be right down. Young Tom is dead. Oh. Uh, uh, In my haste to help the old hag in the thicket, I'd forgotten to detach the safety harness which my uncle had fastened around my neck. I had the good fortune to have my fall broken by a passing double bed. <laughs> now then, hideous crone, what service can I be to you? may befall you at Dundreech, but none may harm you so long as you wear this. 
Farewell, young Tom. No doubt we shall meet again. And with that, she was gone, leaving me to ponder the significance of our encounter. Huh? Ah, Mr. Stranger, whom I've never seen before in my life. Would you happen to know the whereabouts of the lifeless corpse of a pathetic wretch who goes by the name of Young Tom, who's my nephew? And also, I've recently discovered the rightful master of Dundreef, since which discovery I and my evil lackey Bueller have been trying to murder him, although he suspects nothing. This terrible plot made my hair stand an end like porcupine quills. <laughs> In the circumstances, I thought it was best not to reveal my true identity. No, sir. I have not seen the man to whom you refer. Well, where the hell is he? was hanging from that tree five minutes ago. And who the hell are you? They don't like strangers in these parts. I had to think quickly. I'm a deserter, sir, from the army of Butcher Cumberland, seeking refuge. A deserter? A low, treacherous scumbag? Just the sort of man I'm looking for. <laughs> What's say it's a job in my surgery? Surgery? Who said that? Surgery, sir? Huh? It was you. Yes, in my charity, I have a small clinic for the sick and the poor. Are you a qualified doctor? No, I don't believe in exams. I dabble, but the treatment's absolutely free. Uh, well, Mr. Thistlethwaite, I think I can safely say you'll have no more trouble with that cartilage. <laughs> I'm in a hurry today. Pop along. <laughs> this little piggy went to market, and this little leg went in the bin. Here's another rebel cadaver for you, Governor. Fools! How many times have I told you only to deliver cadavers for my scientific experiments on a dark and foggy night? Keep your hair on, Governor. We were in the area. It was starting to smell a bit, so we thought we'd damp it and leave with, with some whiskey. Get her. So that was it. Uncle was trading with the Redcoats Dundreich 10 minute old malt in exchange for dead bodies to be used in scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I think that's enough to see us through the week. <laughs> You're in a grand mood the day, sir. And why not, Jake? Young Tom is dead. I got a whole heap of cadavers for my scientific experiments and Celtic have drawn Berwick Rangers for the cup. <laughs> what is the nature of the experiment today, sir? Today, Jake, we're going for the big one. For centuries, man has longed to play God, to find out the true secret of creation. And today, you and I, Jake, are going to do just that. We will take these lifeless limbs, these unseeing eyes, and we will create... No! Yes! The perfect ventriloquist's dummy. <laughs> well, better than you, certainly. There's no way to speak to a fine doctor. Fine doctor? You can open a tin of beans. As I pondered how I could thwart my uncle's unnatural intentions, a flake of dandruff from the dummy's head lodged in my left nostril. <gasps> Joe! Not dead after all. <laughs> Behold, the new Lord Charles. <laughs> it was the oldest trick in the book, but it was worth a try. Aha, Inspector! You've arrived just in time! <laughs> The magic charm lost, my true identity known, I now had to run for my life, pursued by Uncle Murdoch and his cruel hey. lackey, Beulah. Come on, Beulah, make you go faster.
Cheat me out of my rightful inheritance. Let me do it, sire. I'll make sure it's slow, painful, lingering, and horrible. Shut up, Bella. It's all mine now. Prepare to meet your end. Stay your hand, Murdoch. Force master of Dundree. Oh, master. It is the sorceress of darkness. The hermit would have been. Flour from the corn mill, eggs from the chicken, milk from the dairy cow, and grated gouder from the delicatessen. <laughs> what does she mean, Master? They're ingredients, Bula. Individually quite harmless, of course, but mixed and put in an oven at regular Mark 7, 350 degrees, they make cheese scones. <laughs> I'll have to act quickly. Or Dundreek will wither and die under a plague of heartburn and flatulence. <laughs> Do you think your bullets can hurt me? <laughs> yes. You're right. The widow's intervention gave me my chance. During the confusion, I was able to escape and return to Edinburgh, where I now reside, cosy and secure. The memories of Dundreek, but a distant nightmare. You are who I spy. Oh, no. Spare no. me, Uncle! I have got no one to blame but yourself. Didn't know you kept a dog. <laughs> 